All right, so bear with me here. This is going to be a little bit off the cuff. I just kind of came up with this uh, over the last couple of days, reading the comments, thinking about what you all had to say. So just, you know, kind of hang in there, buckle up. All right, so Apple announced the all-new Creator Studio subscription that includes pro creativity apps like Final Cut Pro, Motion, and Logic Pro. It also includes the original iWork apps, as well as the newly acquired Photoshop competitor, Pixelmator Pro. Photomator was left out but I'm gonna make a different video all about why I think they did that. So be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss it. Now, all of you are losing your minds in the comments on my video where I react to the news of the new features in Final Cut Pro through Creator Studio. You're saying it's over for Final Cut, Apple has gone fully subscription, they're gonna phase out the standalone purchase price. All the new cool AI features will be behind a paywall. You're all gonna to switch to Resolve now. So I'm gonna cover three things in this video. First, all the facts about Creator Studio to try to help dispel some of the fears that are out there. Secondly, how Apple subscription will be different than other companies that offer subscriptions. And lastly, why some of the elements of the all new Final Cut Pro will require a subscription. So let's dive into some facts. Creator Studio launches on January 28th for $12.99 a month USD. You can still buy Final Cut, Logic, Motion, all of the apps outright, and use them and get feature updates in the future. Apple has discontinued the Final Cut for iPad standalone subscription for new customers. To get it now, you have to subscribe to Creator Studio. Now, existing subscribers like me are grandfathered in. Some enhanced content in the all-new Final Cut Pro will require a subscription. This enhanced content includes graphics and titles, transitions, and some effects, but these are only specific ones, not all of them. Apple has also discontinued the 90-day free trial of Final Cut Pro on the US website. It's still available in the UK and possibly elsewhere. Now, if you open a Final Cut Pro library made using Creator Studio, but you are not currently subscribed to Creator Studio, you have to be a paying subscriber to open or edit a Final Cut Pro project. Apple has an FAQ section on the Creator Studio page you can check out to get more of the specifics. If there's anything I missed, please drop those additional facts in the comments. If you have any questions about any of these, please drop them in the comments. I or the community will try to answer them. Okay, now that we've got the facts cleared up, let's get down to business. You're thinking, it's a subscription. We're doomed. Apple's going to screw us. Look, Apple sells hardware first and foremost. Software and services are a funnel to the hardware. Companies like Adobe, Artlist, Motion VFX, which I love except for Adobe, are software only. They don't sell hardware. They have to use a subscription model to maximize their revenue and invest in new tools for all of us. To me, a company like Adobe, for many of us, is a necessary evil because there is not a good competitor offering out there. Now, maybe there is with specific individual apps like Capture One and Lightroom, but not for the entire creative suite. Apple's new Creator Studio, from what I understand, is the next closest thing. Now, Blackmagic Design isn't enough of a hardware company that's making editing tech to use software to funnel customers to their hardware products. They use cameras and other specialty high-end hardware to funnel people to their software, which is either free or you can purchase it as a standalone purchase. They don't offer a subscription as far as I know, but I do think that they will eventually move to a subscription and purchase combination, especially as their post-production tools continue to become enhanced and companies see what companies like Artlist are doing to generate revenue with effects, titles, templates, transitions, and AI-generated content like voiceovers, stills, and video. Companies like Apple and Adobe and Blackmagic are going to get in on that. They're gonna steal market share and develop enhanced, content marketplaces that exist inside their software applications. Apple is simply leveraging the apps in Creator Studio to compete with Adobe's Creative Cloud, Artlist, and eventually the AI services out there that are allowing users to generate video clips, sound effects, voiceovers, etc. They want to be the one-stop shop to create every element you need for what you make, especially when they can offer those tools to you for much less than their competitors because they're funneling you to continue to buy their hardware. Now, I made a video a while back about the return of Final Cut Studio, and I talked about how this could usher in the creation of a version of Final Cut that is more like 
Final Cut Pro Pro, that people could pay for a very high-end version of Final Cut that had incredibly powerful Pro capabilities that started getting the UI a little bit more complex like DaVinci Resolve. For the majority of Final Cut Pro users who are creating YouTube videos or they're hobbyists, they're not doing things at that high level of film and documentary work and commercial work. They don't need the software to be overwhelming and bloated with every last little tool and feature. But at the same time, iMovie is not sophisticated enough to do what they need done. So with this Creator Studio subscription, it's our chance, the high-end professionals that want to use these really advanced tools, to get those high-end pro features in an enhanced version of Final Cut. So Final Cut Pro could be essentially Final Cut Lite or Final Cut Express, and the subscription option allows you to get really high-end features that the majority of users don't use, sort of that Final Cut Pro Pro. And for those users who are earning a living off of post-production services, and editing film and television and commercial work. A subscription is not a barrier to having access to those tools. They can fold the cost of that subscription into their annual expenses, write them off on their taxes, and finally get the features that they're dying for in Final Cut Pro, but done in that elegant, sophisticated Apple way, like the magnetic timeline or the browser. Now, one enhanced feature could include using iCloud to have a fully collaborative workflow with remote editors. Get Creator Studio Plus, have unlimited iCloud storage for Final Cut Pro projects where multiple editors can access the app to edit a feature film, a documentary, or a high-end YouTube video from a top content creator. Is Creator Studio paving the way for these kinds of enhancements to Final Cut Pro? And does tying a subscription cost to the software incentivize Apple to develop these apps in new and exciting ways when a relative relatively inexpensive standalone purchase price didn't. Apple has made a big splash with Apple intelligence, but for the most part, it's fallen flat. As Apple continues to develop it, it isn't just going to be productivity in day-to-day -day administrative tasks, the Siri we always wanted but never got. It's going to be for creators that want to use Apple intelligence to do really incredible work, to create powerful imagery, to use Apple intelligence within these apps to just tell the app what they want done, like add a 10 second transition at this edit point or something more complex like make this audio sound like it's coming from an old AM radio in another room in the house. I've already used ChatGPT to figure out what audio effects and settings I need to use to get these kinds of results. If Apple's smart, they'll start using Apple intelligence to build features like this within the app. I'd love it if it was part of a standalone purchase, but for me, I'd be more than happy to subscribe to use a tool like that. I think you have to know that Apple is thinking about these types of uses of their software, and some people are willing to pay a subscription to use those really high-end Apple intelligence features or have access to all of that enhanced content, just like they do with iCloud. There's the free option and the enhanced subscription options. And again, I think the enhanced content will remain paywalled, but the really cool features Final Cut Pro will adopt will be available to everyone, subscribers and standalone buyers. Now, why is that? Apple wants you to keep buying Macs. That's the subscription. Every three to five years, you buy a new Mac to take advantage of all the cool features available in your favorite apps. You can buy your Mac outright, or you can finance it for 12 months at 0% using the Apple Card. Apple invented their own version of a credit card simply so you could subscribe to a Mac rather than having to pay for the whole thing day one you're already subscribing to what they want you to subscribe to. For a certain subset of customers, an additional subscription to even more valuable software and services is welcome. For others, you can just buy Final Cut Pro outright and happily miss out on this enhanced content that requires a subscription. Here's why I don't think Apple's going to create a subscription-only option for Final Cut Pro. Now, I know that it's the case for Final Cut Pro for iPads, so there's evidence there that they would because they have. I think Apple does want to turn Creator Studio into this necessary evil like Adobe's Creative Cloud is. People have no choice there, and I think time and time again, we have learned that people want to be able to choose. They can buy the standalone app and get 90% of the new feature updates, new enhancements, new keyboard shortcuts, new bug fixes, all of that stuff, new UI enhancements, all of that through the standalone purchase of Final Cut Pro, but then have this enhanced content that not everyone is going to want or use behind a subscription paywall. It's just getting a little ridiculous to think that a company that has this much value to offer wouldn't create multiple options for how to capitalize on it. It's a great way for Apple to be unique among its competitors and for Apple to continue to have a positive association from customers with their brand. 
I don't think that exists with Adobe. I paid $299 for Final Cut Pro almost 15 years ago and have used it almost every day of my life since. I have installed all of the updates at no additional cost, and I have made hundreds of thousands of dollars in gross revenue for my business since I first installed it. I will happily pay $12.99 per month for Creator Studio if that means all of the apps within it are going to have their development supercharged because Apple has subscribers to answer to, shareholders who want to see revenue grow, and Apple fanboys like me who want to see the company continue to make powerful products that empower me to earn a living doing what I love, which is making internet videos in my basement for all of you. Now, it's not perfect. It's not ideal. It is unfortunate that the only way to get the enhanced content in the all-new Final Cut Pro is with a subscription. It isn't ideal that older projects made with Creator Studio can't be opened unless you have an active subscription. And I get the concerns that this is all part of the attract and extract school of business. Offer something amazing for next to nothing, and then start slowly extracting more and more for your, from your customers. You guys think that's what's going to happen with Creator Studio? It's possible. I don't think it's going to happen. But attract and extract. Amazon is doing it. Adobe did it. Disney, Netflix, all the streaming sites have done it and continue to do it. And now many of you think Apple is following in their footsteps. But I disagree. I do think Apple is trying to find that middle ground where it feels like you're getting a good deal, that there's reciprocity, that they actually care. Are they perfect? No. But I will gladly be an Apple customer with hardware, software, and services ahead of all the other companies that are out there that are offering subscriptions. So let it rip in the comments. What am I missing? What am I not understanding? How is this still a ripoff? But what I'd rather hear is how your use of Apple products has empowered you to earn a living, reduce friction in your life, how it's allowed you to connect with like-minded artists and creators, or how it's allowed you to make something that you love. And get specific, what's something you did that couldn't have been done without an Apple product? This channel's one of them. I couldn't have done this without Apple. So don't forget to subscribe. There's plenty more coverage coming about Creator Studio and the all-new Final Cut Pro. So keep chopping, and I'll see you in the next video.